welcome back to another episode of the van build it's been a while but we're back at it today we're having a look at fitting the table and working out the bed see if we can get the bed sorted out it's uh, it's been a bit of a head scratcher but we think we've got a rough plan so i'll let you see what we're doing stay tuned right got one of these one of these articulating tables so i think we're gonna the plan is to get it attached to here beef this up a little bit cut these down by half so it's got somewhere to sit and then when the table's not in use it'll fill this area and that'll be uh, that'll make up part of the bed and then we'll figure out what to do with this bit as we go i've got my heater under here auto term two kilowatt heater you've got the control panel here which does all your bits and pieces and your temperatures and stuff. The guys at Auto Term did a mint job on that. And also they gave me a discount code. If you want to get a little bit of money knocked off, if you're thinking of using one of these diesel heaters and you want to use Auto Term, I do recommend them. So I'll leave a link below. There is a bit of a discount code for you below if you want one of these Auto Term diesel heaters. I recommend them as a company. They were brilliant to work with and I've slept in it and it is super warm. Perfect for this size van. It's attached. So a metal plate here goes under the van and then we tap into the main fuel tank of the van so really happy with it and i tell you what the difference on an evening in here is it's something else it means i can use it all year round and thanks to the lads at auto term for sorting that out for me so i've marked these so they come halfway over that bit of lap there so we'll have a bit of a recess to put the table on that's the idea yeah the options are them there's loads there's of loads options. yeah i think what we need to do is fix this then you can Actually, put that on top and f around with it until you're happy with where it is. Could you say that again, please? <laughs> f around with it. Yeah. We'll beep it. It's funny to have a few beeps in, isn't it? <laughs> right, okay then. So that's that. Beef this out, attach this leg, and then have a go with like the options of whether we want it to the side or to the front, just to make it work as best it can. And then get it, get some of that oak stuff on it, yeah. varnish it up. And tis your bomb. And tis your bomb. And tis your uncle. And this is your aunt. This is your auntie's left leg. If my dad had uncles, she'd be me bollocks. We're using these MDF bits and we're just going to cover these in carpet and attach them to these bottom bits. And on these bits, we're going to do something a little bit fancy. Shimmy, shimmy yard. Down with your adhesive and then just want to give it a minute, wait till it's tacky to the touch, and then we're folding it over. There's not a man born from his mother's <laughs> that could beat me square going to fight. <laughs> You're a bucket of shite, I tell you. These fixings, they came with it, so what we'll do is we'll put them through, as is, and then you plunge that down. Okay, well, because you can see it. And it it pushes these two side bits out and keeps it, keeps it tight in there. And looks quite good. How's that table coming along, Dad? Working. <laughs> yep. Look at that. Is that focus work. In hot rod. Hey, top, it's just 17. Top shagger. That's not the facial hair of a 17 year old, is it? Made them different in 1600s. Pop black in 18. But... Look at those cowboy boots. Hustler. <laughs> there he is. Articulating table, which you can lock it in anywhere, it comes up, down, perfect for having your tea on, or if you want to just lie in bed and have your, your laptop on and do a bit of work as an office, you can bang it over there, and then you can just tuck it out of the way, lock it off while you're driving and still walk about, get it back out, put it where you like, and then it's completely removable, and then this becomes part of the bed system. When you're ready for bed, it just comes off like that. All the table mechanics are behind there, and then that becomes part of the bed, or a different way of sitting. And now, the conundrum is to extend this. And so there's this area here, it's been a bit of an ongoing head scratch, and we've had lots of different ideas of how to utilize this to bring it out and cover this area 
And in the end we've just said, let's just get an extra piece so that we're not having to muck about. This will sit here, dovetail joints either side, and then the other bit will just slide down here out the way. And so when it comes to setting the bed up, the tabletop goes there, and I'll just pull this bit out. It has two legs on it that go here, and then the two dovetail joints will fit into there, and so that means it won't pull this way. I didn't just want a plain plywood table. I want something a little bit fancy. So I've got some oak veneer, which is actual oak. It's so thin and you can, we can, well, I'll show you what we do. We're going to put that so it's got an oak finish and then Bill's going to trim some oak up around the edges. So this will just look like a solid oak table, but with all the lightness and cheapness of ply. And that's another one at jobs today. Also going to try and get another one of these panels in and maybe do a bit of carpeting. So Let's crack on. No nonsense. No nonsense, Kevin Peterson. Right, so we leave no nonsense, Kevin Peterson, just for a, just for a minute, just till it gets a little bit tacky to touch and then we'll go on with it. Hi guys, you joined me here today. <laughs> so yesterday we had a problem putting the um, the pop rivets or whatever they put are there. Plastic pop rivets. Yeah, the sort of plastic pop rivets threw away because all the material was gathering in the in the mechanism of the rivet. So we've come up with the idea of using a soldering iron into the hole, and you can see it melts it away. Gives you a perfect hole to work with. Tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. <laughs> <laughs> After all our pissing about and coming up with different ideas, this is the end result. Take it away, look. <laughs> Sometimes it's the simplest of things, isn't it? Works a treat. Works a treat. Just three dovetail joints in there. It's not going to go anywhere. The, what is it? The main support of the. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a tripod system. <laughs> so it's the tripod system. That'll just flip down off the, the main thing here and support. That'll support my legs. And then you just fold it up. <laughs> and then you can just fold it up. Fold it up. And when you want to put it away, you can just slide it back down there. So, yep, yeah, that's pretty cool. Cheers, Bill. Just for the benefit of the people watching, can you just talk us through a dovetail joint? It's very simple, that it's, it's in, in the shape of a dove's tail and it, it, it locks itself in, it can't pull out. So this is just about as simple as you can get. We've just done three on this, doesn't need anything special because all, all the weight straight down. Easy to take out and put into storage. Perfect. Perfect, it's, an old, it's like a, it's a very old school way of doing joinery, isn't it? It like, is, yeah, yeah, but it's so strong. And so there you go, just yeah. three dovetail joints and it's as simple as that. So this piece of MDF is broken, so I'm just putting it over some 6mm ply, draw around it, make a template, cut that out, put the holes in, carpet it, and that's going to go on the inside of the sliding door. Perfect. Won't need to sand the edges because it's going to have a carpet going over it. But we'll need to put some holes in it and just a 9mm drill bit. another panel ready to go. It's actually wood, it's oak. 0.4 mil. It's got adhesive on the back. Two bits cut. That's 
pretty much invisible when it's touched. That's um, pretty good, is that, isn't it? Fall oak and fold. Right, right we'll just peel back the first corner to get a start point. Yeah. Then we'll peel it off underneath once we're happy with where it is. It's quite nice, that. It looks oak. Eh. Hey. Hey. This was this was my granddad's, my dad's dad's, and how old is it? Probably. Well, when he was decorating, he would have been in his uh, late twenties, early thirties, and he's now ninety-six. You do the math, right? So there it is, in all its glory. It's just going to put. Well, Bill's going to put some trim on it. We're going to varnish it up. This is our MDF board that we, if you see from the back of it, plain old MDF, and then Bosch. It'll look better than that once it's got its oil on and stuff, but that's that's the sort of look we're going for. And then we've put holes in it, and we're going to go and offer it up and see if the uh, the rivets match. Come follow me. Camera, I'll talk to you like a. Keith Floyd, you ever see Keith Floyd, the chef? Yeah. He said, no, 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 come to me, to me, get a, get a look at this. Look, this is the real star. Up here, I'm the star. No, the real star is this. Bolognese. Wrong side, in it. So that's the look we're going for, but all this will be carpeted. So it's sort of like, that oh, looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. Once it's varnished up and it'll look the same as this. Like finished oak. So that's a little hack that for you. Veneer over MDF to look like, it's really super lightweight, but looks like a big solid oak panel. Now what we're gonna do is put a little bit of Danish oil on and come and have a look. That's just one coat, look at it. There we go, look at that. It's looking really nice actually. Nice, isn't it? So that's just one coat and uh, chuck another couple of coats on that. You can tell that it. Yeah, subtitles. <laughs> the death and then that was it, so I got away with it. 30 year stretch was out in two. Come on! There'll be people who've done this before. There'll probably be even professional van builders watching this, so. Soz. It's all, it's what it is. I'm realizing now that when I had it all stripped out and after I'd insulated it, should have just carpeted the whole thing when it was done, but hindsight is a wonderful thing. Didn't do it, and now all the furniture's in, so. It's gonna be a bit of a chew, because all I wanna do is just do the metal bits so I have to tuck it right into here, into here, then put the panels on. And that's my job today. I'm just gonna carpet the this side and hopefully this side and the inside of the door as well. Get that finished. Leave a little bit overhanging here. So that when I decide what I'm doing with roof, which I think I know, then I can just tuck the carpet in and on with roof. What you'll need for this project is a pair of gloves. So Sticky hairspray, a face mask, a Stanley knife, and uh, whatever, some plastic. They've got these wedges that are obviously by its very nature, it is a wedge. Thicker at yon end, thinner at t'other. And I'll just use that to work the carpet into the corners and get it tucked in. One more thing I need is just a little bit of like a chunk of cardboard or whatever just to put up to stop the glue going in unwanted places. Safety first. The doctor will see you now. Do you feel in charge? I was born in the darkness, molded by it. So I've cleaned the area that I'll be uh, sticking the adhesive to, all the dust, gone, grease, whatever. There's just all this furniture in there, isn't there? Yesterday was a disaster because 
I watched one YouTube video on carpet in a van and thought I was an expert. Turns out I'm not. It's harder than it looks. And I also, in hindsight, should have done the carpeting before we furnished it. So I wasted a lot of my time putting in the carpet and then it was twisted by the time I got to end. I was just doing it a bit wrong and rushing it, I think. That was a write-off. And then, and this is a bit of a lesson for anyone who's doing this um, oak veneer stuff. We noticed at the end of the day, I got the table to go varnish it and it had, it had warped, it had started to warp quite badly. And this did as well. Yesterday, this was all risen, but I went over it with, I went over it with this, Nick's granddad's decorating tool, and just sort of smashed it down with this, and then left it in here overnight, and it seems to have calmed down. Oh, no, you can see it there, look. You see that? Ah, oh, it's not good enough. So that has started to happen all on the table as well, so, Yesterday was a write-off. It was uh, yeah, one step forward, two steps back. Just one of them days. I had a good night's sleep. Back at it today. Uh, <laughs> watched another YouTube video, so I'm pretty much an expert. Take three. So hopefully the next shot will be of this all beautifully carpeted. Progress report. I've not had a meltdown today. It's going on well. It's just been a bit of a chew getting all the uh, contours right and uh, I'm just using this wedged bit of plastic to sort of tuck things in in and around there and behind here this was a chore but everything is running flush and going in well I don't want to jinx myself because I've still got all that to do we go back in with the soldering iron just to get our holes back Please work. So this ply had warped pretty badly, but I've kept it rolling, kept it at a decent temperature, added a couple more layers of Danish oil, and it's looking all right. It looks well. Right, now we just need to finish this carpet near the door, and then that's that side done. Had to remove the rubber trim from the door so that I can get a clean cut down here and then cover it back over. There's he. What? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, this stuff is called stretch carpet, so if you make a goof, as I did, you can sort of pull it back got a few mil to work with. Bill is knocking up out of oak some... Draw fronts for the back of the van. How does he do it, you ask? Watch and learn. <laughs> That's a bit of kit, is that, innit? Just the biz, isn't it? So that's the bit, which is the same as that one there? No, this one's uh, the mirror image of that one. So when we cut the ends of the vertical bits for the draw fronts, it cuts this moulding into here so that these two fit together. That's good for picture frames and stuff. Yeah. So you can see that A goes into B. Beautiful bits of oak. What a machine that is, look. And so the idea is that these are going to go at the back of the van because we're going to do some sort of oak E kitchen -y. Yeah. Country style kitchen vibes at the back. So that's the finished article on the end. And as you can see, perfect absolutely joint. Absolutely perfect. But after that oak faced veneer, it was a bit temp temperamental, so we're not going to go with that. We're not going to go with the oak faced ply because we'd have to order it in. So we're just going to go with some plywood. So this is the finished result of what you get using them crazy bits. And, uh, and, and there's another one to knock up. <laughs> well, as I say that, I look to my left and he's already boshed one up. So you've seen the wood being routed. You've seen them being put together. They've had a bit of oil on, look at that. Shit lighting, but you get the idea. Now at the back of these, we've doubled up on the plywood so that, so that it's flush with the, the, the actual draw itself. We were just saying that, because I keep on my gear in here, it'd be funny if my thermo rest X therm was on the other side of that. 
And of course these will get stained the same with the Danish oil. All look the same. We'll do that in situ. And we've left a gap here. So when the tables come out, it's not going to get in the way. Put some oak veneer in here. Safety here and there, you know, wear a seatbelt, wear a condom, whatever. Sometimes I won't bother, but when there's hot metal shards flying about, it's good to protect the old nogging bollocks as he piles his thumb into one of these screws. These screws are a bit too long, so as we did last time, we've just screwed them through the ply and then we'll cut them off and that'll give us the perfect size screws. They're not when you hit the skin. Finished. I'm just going to use some of this foil tape just to cover up some of these holes. Makes the carpet go better and also stops the moisture from getting in here. Open window. Would you like a bacon booty? Sausage booty, egg booty? <laughs> Do you want glue? I've got a glue booty. <laughs> what I'm doing now is we've taken off this oak trim from an ear and we're measuring up out of oak some chunks of wood so that we can attach them to here and then they'll just turn on their side and lock these drawers in because they're starting to you know when you go around the corner they just open up so I'm gonna have some little things on here. I've been scratching my head about what to do because as the CEO of the most popular latch and lock Instagram page in the world I thought I have to do something, something quite nice, so I'm going to do some oak, I'll probably hand carve them, just little oak wooden bits so that they can turn on the side and lock these in. We've got our length of oak, and this will be cut down into three inch pieces, and then I'll just whittle it, take off these edges, and that'll be our latches. The same width as the oak strip on the furniture there that's set safety first <laughs> right so we've marked three inches i'm going to leave it in one piece so it's easier to work with the material and just use me whittling stuff just make them look something like. I really like that rustic look. I'll stick some oil on them and get them screwed on. There it is, all oiled up. Looks pretty good. There we go. Just a quick little fix for the drawers. And then you just twist them when you're in transit and that'll keep all the drawers fastened. You could do them deeper and hide the screw, screws and put a bit of timber over the top but might do that in the future but for now that's perfect I need to get a long weight a long weight? weight yeah, okay. like kettlebell weight look, we just hang on and get you one yeah. a long weight? yeah oh yeah, I've got These are the best. Tartan paint, left handed hammer, long way. It's classics. And there we go. Sorry, Sarah. That, that was Nick's girlfriend and it was his fault. He sent her for a long way and a long way she got. There we are. That's as far as we've got, so as you can see, or maybe can't, managed to get the carpet done. Gonna put another oak faced panel on that side to marry up with that. The table's in, the faces of the drawers are done. We've got the heater in, which is pretty cool actually, because there's the heater down there, then there's this, has different modes on it. So you can do the temperature, power mode, ventilation and heating, set timers on it and stuff. Again, thanks to the lads at Autoterm, I'll leave a link down below. If you fancy one of these heaters, you're doing up a van or a boat or you just want it 
in a cabinet bottom of your garden or whatever i definitely recommend them and there'll be a discount code below if you want it from this like a workspace area and chilling area we can take that off that goes in there slotted down here is the extension for the bed fits into these dovetail joints and that's it and that creates quite a large bed and there you go thanks for joining us on part three of the van build as i've said before this is the first time so mistakes are going to be made we've learned from the mistakes and downloaded the skills as new like carpet in a van from now on i know what to do but got to have a little bit of trial and error aren't you join us next time when we'll be tackling the roof and the bedding and cushions and seating area got something special coming up for that we'll be uh, putting some holes in these plies don't worry about that because they can get a bit damp when you're lying on them and when they're not allowed to breathe so we're gonna figure out where to put the holes and uh, give this a bit of breathability if you're not subscribed already please consider subscribing hit the bell notification to be notified when the next video is out and look after yourselves. Bye for now. Can I close it from here? But big see you later. Without trapping me dick. Ah, forget it. See you later, as.